Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Bosscoin YouTube channel. Luckily, we survived the YouTube crypto purge. Uh, more on that in a later video, but uh, long story short, we were never affected, so that is really cool. Today, we're gonna be focusing on a review of a miner, okay? It's going to be the Bitmain Ant Miner T17E, which is uh, a confusing uh, naming architecture here, but I'll explain exactly what that is, the differences, and why you should care. And we're going to go into this miner, review it, how is it performing, and not only what is it supposed to make, but what does it actually make? Okay, how much money does the ant miner T7TE mine? And we're gonna talk about Bitcoin mining profitability from exactly how many coins are we mining. I mean, obviously, it's gonna be fractions of coins here in today's mining era. We're also gonna convert that to USD. So how many dollars are we earning? What is that electric cost at my electric rate? And a, a very quick, brief setup guide for anyone who's unfamiliar with it, just to you know, walk through it. If you've ever dealt with an ant miner, it uses the standard ant miner uh, operating system that we are all very familiar with again if you've been mining in addition to the review i'll give you my final thoughts on it basically if i think it's a good buy if you should buy what price points and if not what other bitcoin miners to consider because remember the t17e is a bitcoin miner sha 256 mining algorithm it means it can mine other coins like bitcoin cash bitcoin sv and so if you want to deal with those and even like digibyte on their sha 256 version of their algorithm because they have a, their multi-algorithm coin but anyway get a little bit off topic we're going to jump into today's video look at the profitability look at the machine and then look forward kind of see what's next and what are the good buys moving into bitcoin having into 2020 so without further ado let's see 10 seconds of tails roll the intro and then jump into the video We are reviewing the Bitmain Antminer T17E, the 15 terahash a second version. This is courtesy of Coin Mining Central. If Gavin did not send us this miner, we would not have it here for review. Uh, so they have been good to deal with. People have ordered with Coin Mining Central. They've got their miners. So, you know, so far so good. They're doing good stuff. It's nice to see a reputable third party reseller of these miners because sometimes it's just hard to get them. You don't need KYC with Coin Mining Central. You do need KYC to order direct from Bitmain. So I'll go into that here a little bit later in the video. There is a site wide coupon code that we partner with them for that you will forever get 3% off. So I have this in my cart too. I'm gonna remove that so we just have this miner here. Click and check out. You'll see that if you use the coupon code BOSSCOIN, you will get 3% off, which will save you 33 pounds. Or as they say in the UK, which I've never been to, 33 quid. So let's round out the specs here again. 50 terahash second this miner debuted November 2019. It's got 144 chips with three hash voids, 80 decibels. This thing is loud. Uh, you know, it's it's like two ant miners literally stacked on top of each other. It's got four fans. This is not a quiet device by any means. It's not something you would really want in your house. You need to tuck it in the corner of your basement or you need to put it in your garage if you don't use it that much or whatever you want to do. It's not something you put in your bedroom is basically my point here. Ethernet only. These miners still don't have any kind of Wi-Fi capability but it's kind of easy to get around that which we could go into at a later point if you're interested let me know in the comments below 2880 watts okay how many amps is that if you're on 240 volt that would be 12 amps you know if you got 220 that's still gonna be uh, probably about 12 amps maybe 13 so we got 13 amps and if you're on 110 or 120 volt which is standard US electric if you don't upgrade it I mean it's gonna be some massive amp usage we're running 240 volt in our garage mining farm and with that it's supposed to pull about 12 amps all this stuff is really important because if you don't know how much your miner is burning you may not be as profitable as you think you are you also need to understand this for tax purposes if you run your miner or your mining your mining rigs as a business but again that's another day another video move into the machine log into your router get the IP address okay it's just gonna say amp miner so this is the IP address that was assigned to mine from there I put that into my browser the login is root and then the password is root so root root almost like Groot right and from there you'll get into the device you can see this thing has had an uptime of over six days I just deleted that Google Translate plugin because that was just getting very annoying if I highlight anything it's like hey you want me to translate translate that no like I don't want you to translate 6D 16M 15S obviously poor app 
I don't like it. <laughs> but anyway, so you can see our device. Sometimes people mess up, they cut it out, they redo stuff. But I'm just gonna keep it straightforward. We'll roll this like it was a live stream, right? So uh, I had the wrong one pulled up. We're dealing with the 53 terahash a second model. Still boasts the same power consumption and all that. But anyway, we're dealing with the 53 terahash a second model. And with that, it is hashing an average of 54 and a half gigahash a second or excuse me, terahash a second, that's what that translates to. Uh, so you know, it would be the equivalent of 54.5 terahash a second, and at the current you know, time right now is hashing 54 terahash a second. Okay, just drop down. Anyway, bottom line is this, this fluctuates big time here, so now it's 55. Obviously, you're gonna run off your average here. It's been up, it's great uptime, working well, everything's great when it comes to that. It's had zero issues. Moving over to the configuration, it's just like every other miner. You put your pool address in here, um, your stratum plus TCP slash slash your pool information colon 3333 or whatever the port number that you need for that pool. For example, in today's video, I'm using Slush Pool. They are the oldest and original mining uh, mining pool, especially Bitcoin mining pool. I've got my username dot worker name we, we can go in here to the dashboard if it loads all right finally as you can see the page loaded with here it gives us our poolside scoring hash rate this is what you're going to get paid off of this is the most important thing you want to look at your uh, scoring hash rate over the last day so that's almost 55 terahash a second that's very good for a miner that is supposed to be 53 terahash a second slush pool is not a pps pool it's one of those pools that pays you out only when a block is found so we can see the recent blocks found on this mining pool for example four hours and 18 minutes ago and our scoring hash rate for that period was 53.59 terahash a second um, you know a block was found and at that point we earned this much bitcoin from that block being found six hours and 49 minutes ago with a higher scoring hash rate we earned this much bitcoin okay so keep in mind this is being compared with you know total hash right here of the miners on the pool so if we were the only miner on the pool we would get 100 percent of that block reward but it would also be like incredibly extremely rare and insanely lucky if we ever hit a block with just one miner so down here we can see our rewards over the last 14 days i've already computed an average for these which if you're wondering what the average mining results of this device is over the last 24 hours it's mined 11 dollars and 50 cents or uh, 0.00 one six oh oh six which is also sixteen thousand satoshis which is how you speak in basically bitcoin decibels if you're unfamiliar with that if you're looking at the last seven days average not including the most recent one taking that average and then dividing it by seven so we get a daily average it has only been mining six dollars a day so that is a bit lower than the ant miner t17e 53 terahash version is supposed to make which to be clear this is from mining profit calculators which again they're just estimations but it is supposed to earn seven dollars and 86 cents a day with an electric cost of eight dollars and 40 cents if you have a 12 cent per hour uh 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate which is our electric rate here as a residential home miner and with that in mind you'd be losing 54 cents a day so before you freak out and you're like well what are you doing keep in mind this is a review and this is also a device that especially at this point is really only suited for mining farms so let's say you know we are an industrial mining farm we pay all in five cents per kilowatt hour well if that's the case now this miner is making four dollars a day not the case for me but it could certainly be the case or it certainly is the case for very many crypto mining farms you also may have a, have a lower electric rate even if you have something like you're just paying all in eight cents per kilowatt hour you'd be making two dollars a day sure nothing crazy right i get that i'm not saying it is it's not the heyday of mining like it was and hopefully it will be again eventually but a hey, money made is money made and at some point with a miner you you kind of break even and then you're making more bitcoin than you could have ever bought with that dollar initially that's kind of like the financial incentive here the bottom line when it comes to profitability here is that on you know a good lucky day here it's making eleven dollars and fifty cents before you pay any electric on an average day over the last seven days it's making six dollars uh, before you pay any electric and we have a miner that has had zero performance issues it is 
exceeding what it is supposed to do, which, which is all you could really ever ask for. What we're looking at here is the difficulty chart, mining difficulty versus the price in USD on Bitcoin. You will notice that the hash rate will always lag behind the price. So if price goes crazy, people are like, hey man, let's get some more miners, let's build some farms, let's let's mine. It's a great time to mine. Bitcoin's 13k now. Okay, well, like that all happens, and then they realize it takes way longer. Half a year later, these devices go online, right? Yeah, so that happens. But anyway. My point is just that for the first time in a while, a serious difficulty drop off happened, came back up some, and it's kind of leveled out right here. With the recent stabilization in price, we're probably going to see a small increase in the difficulty and moving towards the halving, which if you're unfamiliar, the Bitcoin block reward halving literally means that the mining profitability for Bitcoin miners will be cut in half daily because half the amount of Bitcoin will be emitted from mining daily moving forward from basically August 2020 or, or estimated. The key takeaway on that is that I really hope you've broken even on your miner by the Bitcoin having because unless the price goes wild, uh, it's gonna be, I mean, the, the, the earnings will be cut in half, like just literally like boom, cut in half. So if it doesn't double in price, your, profit, your mining profitability will have in price. Just like the block reward, you've been warned. Don't say it didn't warn you. If you're wondering what the Antminer T17E sounds like, this is only this miner running in the garage. This is what it sounds like. It's not a quiet miner by any means like we already discussed. Speaking further on the performance of the miner, going back into the dashboard again, this is the performance it's had great uptime, no issues, doing great, everything it's supposed to do. All the ASIC chips have been working from the second it turned on. So all that stuff's great. With the current Antminer uh, OS configuration here, there, there's no overclocking for you to do. The extent of your customization for this device will literally be putting in a mining pool that you want to use. Looking at this device that sells for 1,100 pounds on Coin Mining Central, which to translate that, that's $1,440. Or we can go direct through Bitmain. They still have a, re a model like this. It's the 50 terahash second version, so slightly slower. They have this in stock at 840, or they, they have it available to order. It's a future order for a future date shipping in, uh, in January 2020. And from there, it's 843. Plus, you're going to have a 30% tariff tax. Plus, you're going to pay you know around 60 or so dollars for shipping so you'll quickly end up around 1200 1300 dollars so the prices are actually relatively comparable especially considering that we're dealing with a reseller here and you also don't have to do kyc for whatever that is worth to you and also depending on your location i invite you to contact them and say you came from the vosco on youtube channel and ask them about tariffs and where they where they're going to be shipping from and if it's possible to ship from a different location so you aren't paying the 30 percent china tariff the t17e is a good choice depending on your electric rate if you have cheap electric that's basically why the t17 model series exists at all also if you're wondering about like the e naming basically it's just denoting it's a different model like it, honestly like it makes no sense what bitmain does if there's a different letter it's a different model the specs are going to be slightly different you know we have the s17e here and it's priced at 1400 pounds at 60 terahash but personally i don't know if i want to spend 300 more pounds or you know whatever that equates to in dollars to just seven more terahash if you're going for ultimate density the amp miner s17 plus which we're going to have here to review soon is going to be the better choice because while it is obviously more expensive it is is that how did i not notice the usd thing has that always been oh my for this device being $2,340 compared to the T17 at $1,430, I mean, that is quite a price increase for, again, only, only 20 terahash a second. And now you quickly see why the T17 series, the, you know, the T series, are very relevant when it comes to big mining farms with cheap electric. So ultimately, guys, the T17E is a great miner for Bitcoin mining from Bitmain. We can't take that away from it. It doesn't matter if you like ASIC mining or you don't. The miner does exactly what it's supposed to do. It has an integrated power supply for a better and worse. So if that power supply goes down, miners, you know, it's going to take more work to get it back online. But the point is very deployable. You throw this on the shelf, you plug power, power, Ethernet, 
done. You just throw a couple of those on the shelves, you plug them in, you go get on your computer, you sync it up to your mining pool, just like that you deployed a mining farm, okay? It's not like building a GPU rig that have a, a, so many more steps involved, a lot more uh, just love, and TLC we'll call it, goes into GPU rig build and operation, okay? And don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on GPU rigs, it's just there's a very big difference and it's really no surprise why mining farms absolutely cater to ASIC mining as opposed to things like GPU rig builds. So what I recommend the miner, you know, it depends on your situation. If you're building out a mining farm, you got cheap electric. Well, obviously, absolutely, this is going to be a great choice if you want a current generation, cheaper miner that has a pretty good performance. If you're looking for ultimate density and you've got a higher electric rate, well, you should be looking more towards like the T the S17s and the S17 pluses where you're going to get a higher efficiency per watt. As always, guys, there's multiple miners for you know different people scenarios different farms and kind of you know their electric rates and budget and also just kind of what's available at the time when you want and are ready to order so as always it's another bitcoin miner it's another miner from bitmain that has a name that's very forgettable the t17e not to be confused with every other you know letter number something they have in their lineup it's not a bad miner it's a good miner it does what it's supposed to do really all you could ask from an asic miner still not a huge fan of asic mining but here we are with all that said guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please make sure to subscribe to the boss coin youtube channel hit the thumbs up and leave a comment below let me know what you liked let me know what you didn't like we'll see you next time I'll be home.